Jamie and Adam are testing the myth that if your car swerves off the road and into a body of water, to get out alive, you have to wait until it's completely submerged and full of water before you can open the door. So did you know last year, AAA estimated 11,000 vehicles went off the road and into the water, and as a result of those accidents, 300 people died. Holy cow, that's a lot of people. Yeah. I thought it was more like a freak accident. No, apparently it's a lot more common than that. Well, maybe we can help raise awareness a bit as to what these people are facing. And what better way to raise awareness than to raise themselves in a car into the sky and plunge into a pool. What the f are we doing? Remember, when Adam goes 13 feet under, he won't be wearing breathing apparatus. The paramedics are on their toes. And Adam has his escape strategy all worked out. I'm going to try to start opening this door the moment I see the water get above my glass. Now, if the myth is true, I won't be able to open that door until the water level inside the car gets to the same point. Deep breaths, Adam. Deep breaths. It's way too late to put on the brakes. I couldn't stop now if I wanted to. As the water rushes in, Adam is getting that sinking feeling. Oh, shit. Oh, man. Oh, the crane chains go slack, and the car is sinking on its own. The 700-pound fake engine is taking it down nose first, exactly as it would in a real situation. The water's up to my butt now. All right. OK, it's coming past my waist. Now I can start to see under the water. Oh my god, it's coming up under the windshield. Wow, I can feel the pressure. All right, I only have a couple more breaths here. Adam's never this quiet. So what's going on down there? The water is leaking in from every open crevice in the car, and Adam is now fully under. He holds his breath, tugs on the door, pushes his whole weight against it, but nothing happens. Finally, he can't hold his breath any longer and signals for Jamie to pass in the regulator. When the pressure ultimately equalizes, he opens the door and swims to the surface. But it was too late. No matter how you slice it, uh, I died. Let's just put it that way. Well, that's put a dampener on things. From the time the water hit Adam's knees to when he surfaced took just one minute and 51 seconds. But that's a long time when you're drowning. The fact is, even though you do go vertical, you don't feel like it because the water is filling the cabin at that point. So you're kind of floating. Um, I held my breath, I don't know, for what felt like 30 seconds trying to push open that door, using my legs, bracing up inside the cab. Well, you died. <laughs> yeah, I died. <laughs> Jamie's passive observer view was a little eerie. I'm just sitting there watching the guy drown. He's like just going nuts on that door. He's really using up his oxygen, and uh, it didn't take him that long to run out. You don't want to be in a car when it goes down like that. It's, it's scary. The bottom line is Adam ran out of air before he could open the door. Uh, that myth is confirmed. I, I could not open that door until the cab seemed to be full of water for a while. Yeah, you were giving it all you could, and you just weren't able to do anything in that, with that door until we started to level out. That's the point that you opened the door. Yeah. And that was quite a while. Differential pressure can be such a downer. 